what is up everyone and welcome back to the channel now i know you've been waiting for this for quite some time i've read your comments i've read your questions and today is the day we're going to take a look finally going to take a look at the zontes 350 series lineup now we have received a couple of bikes in we have the gk350 we have the x2 350 and the t2 350 and uh, we're gonna take a look first of all this is gonna be more a bit of a longer video than my usual reviews uh, we are going to take a close look at the gk350 because this is the new of the new model of the bunch and uh, we're gonna take a quick look over the changes that have arrived on the x2 and the t2 and the changes i'm gonna highlight uh, on these two bikes uh, pretty much apply to the entire zone test 350 lineup so let's get straight into it and talk about the gist of the matter so the 350 cc engine uh, the previous generation had a 312 cc engine now they've managed to increase the engine capacity by a simple method of boring the, the engine out. I'm going to have some information here on the screen. Uh, the 300, the old 312 versus the new 348cc engine. The bore size has increased from 80 millimeters to 84.5 millimeters. The stroke is the same for both engines at 62 mil. The engine capacity, the old one was 312, the new one is 348. And uh, the compression ratio, the old one was 12.5 and this new one is actually 12.3. It's actually a little bit lower compression, but that's not necessarily a, a bad thing because even 12.3 is pretty high and pretty potent. In terms of horsepower, this new engine produces its maximum horsepower at exactly 9500 RPM, just like the old engine. The old engine had 35 horsepower, the new engine has 39 horsepower. And in terms of torque, again, the new engine makes its torque at exactly the same RPM at 7500 RPM, its maximum torque. The old one had 30 newton meters of torque, the new one has 33 newton meters of torque. So we have a bit of a bump in horsepower, we have a bit of a bump in torque. And that's what you get when you just bore out the engine. Basically the piston and the cylinder is just a little bit, lar a little bit larger. Now another difference to these bikes is the braking system. Now you, before we had some Zontes branded brake calipers, now we have some Zhijuan branded brakes. Now the front brake caliper is a little bit bigger than on the previous generation so the brake pad has a little bit more surface area also the front disc has grown from 300 millimeters to 320 and the rear brake disc while retaining its normal caliper the same caliper it had on the previous generation has grown in diameter from 230 mil to 265 so all, all around both front and rear the brakes have grown in size which should give a little bit more stopping power, a little bit better brake feel. I can already tell the front brake with this new caliper feels just a little bit better, just a little bit more immediate. It's subtle the difference, but it is there. Also, for comfort or ease of use, uh, we now get on all models adjustable rear brake lever and adjustable gear shift lever. So. When, in case you have bigger feet, you can push them a little bit forward. If you have smaller feet, you can pull them a little bit, a little bit towards you. So you can set it up perfectly for your size of feet, which is a nice add-on and it's standard all across the, the 350cc lineup. Also, another thing I want to talk about is the new key fob. Now, it looks exactly the same as the old key fob. It still fits in the same Mi wristband. You can wear it on your hand. In terms of functionality, it's the same. What is new for the new generation is the fact that this key fob is IP67 certified. So basically it's dust resistant and water resistant for a short period of time submerged in a maximum of one meter of water. So in case you drop it in a puddle or anything, it will not get damaged, it will still work perfectly fine. And uh, there's also another thing that for the first time I managed to get working on the 350cc series of bikes. Now, 
We're let's take a look at this X2 and uh, I'm not going to cut anything because I want this to be as believable as possible. So here I have the main key. That's why I set up this camera here. Here I have the main key and uh, if we hold it near the bike, it turns on perfectly normal. Ignition is on perfectly natural. Now, this key in here has a small battery. You can see it here. It's a 1225 battery. It's a very small battery and uh, from experience I haven't seen I haven't seen them lasting more than let's say one year. Now previously I would recommend everybody carry a spare battery with you just in case. But this is the second key to the bike and in this key I have already removed the battery. So basically this is the second key. It has no battery in it. It's basically a dead key. So we're going to take the main key and put it over here. So now the key is far away from the bike. It's over a meter and a half away and we cannot start the bike because the second key that I have in my hand doesn't have a battery in it. So if I hold it here, the bike makes just one beep. That's that one beep lets me know that the bike is not detecting a key. So I want to go and put the ignition on. It's not detecting a key. There is a way. There is a there is an RFID plate in here. It's basically a sort of NFC and each of the models and this is very important check your user manual if you bought one because each of the models has a certain place around the bike where you can hold this close to it and it will read the key even if you don't have a battery in it see no battery so on this x2 it's right around here this is the area where the antenna is located so what we're gonna do we're gonna press the red button and hold it and move the key around this area to try and find the correct position and the ignition will switch on. So, like I've said, no battery, bike doesn't start up. Let's hold, up, hold it, put it. Now it may take a little bit of, come on. And there it is. The ignition is on and now again with the key with no battery I can switch the bike on and I can get home even if my battery key is dead and it finally works it is a little bit finicky you have to just move it around and hold the button until it reads the key fob but it does work and it will get you home now another big add-on to or actually an improvement to the quality of life of the bike is the easy connect app now we finally have an app that's in english and uh, let's just zoom zoom you out a little bit right so now that we have an app in english we can actually go into the settings into the easy connect app and now I have my phone connected and close this. And now I have navigation on the screen. Let's see if you can see this. Now, if you want to properly use navigation with this screen, uh, there is a paid subscription. It's about three euros per month. So it's not a big uh, deal. You can use the navigation, can set a destination and it goes in there. Uh, you can also listen to your music, take phone calls, see who's calling you, but you can also do mirror projection. So watch this. I'm starting now mirror projection. Now you can see my phone. And now I can fire up Google Maps, switch it around. Let's put a destination. Oh, I don't know. Milano, maybe Milan. Hit directions. And we hit start. And check this out. Now we have Google Maps on the screen showing us everything. Now, the main problem with this, if I lock my phone, 
you get a blank screen. So you have to keep your phone unlocked and with the screen on. This will drain your battery. But if you want the other navigation, then it's a subscription based. So you get to choose what happens. But another thing we can actually do is, uh, oh, I don't know. Let's just watch some YouTube. I don't know what to watch. So we can actually watch a YouTube video while we have our navigation on the side or we can get rid of our navigation and just watch a YouTube video as we ride. Zoom it in. There it is. Zoom it out. It's basically a mirror of your screen. Pretty fun. And uh, at the moment, it's currently a lot more easier to use than it used to be. And if we want to get out, if we want to get out of the screen, we just hold the button. And then we're back to our normal dash. Now, like I've said, we're going to take a closer look at the GK, the GK350. Now, this is based off the old G Scrambler, which came in only 125 and 155 form. This is the GK350 and uh, it's an updated version and you can still get in 125 and 155 cc form it looks pretty much the same the only difference is the 155 have has the exhaust coming out here like on the previous generation and not up here this is specific only to the 350 but otherwise it looks exactly the same so what do we got we've got cross spoked wheels both front and rear, 17 inch front and rear. We got the brand new 320 mil brake disc up front with the Zhijuan uh, brake caliper. We have the same handlebar bar and mirrors, the same lever guards, the same round big headlight. But in terms of dashboard, the 350 comes with the same TFT color dash that all the 350s have. The 125 and the 155 have also a digital display, but a bit of a basic one. It isn't a TFT. We have a bit of crash protection here, a crash pad. We have our adjustable brake lever and on the other side, adjustable gear shift, in the, gear shift lever, just like I've mentioned. Our cold touch exhaust coming up here. We have a new tank compared to the old G series, which is a 17 liters. It's down from the 20 liters of the previous generation, but seriously, the old one, 20 liters for a 125, that was huge. And we also have a new redesigned seat, which has a bit of, it's a contour all the way up here. So you don't need to put like one of those ugly uh, tank guards, tank protections on. In terms of height, it may look like a small city bike, but it's actually pretty tall. Don't get fooled. I, I'm 175 centimeters tall. And as you can see, I cannot flat foot the thing. But what I can say is it is comfortable. So the seat is comfortable. Zontes say that for the new bikes, uh, they changed the gel inside the foam, inside the seat. And it should be a little bit more comfortable. And it feels a little bit different. I don't know. We have the same controls we have on all the 350s. We have the same dash. The position is the same position you had on the old G series. So you're just a little bit leaned forward, but it's nice. It's a nice position. It's comfortable for the city. You have plenty of leg room here. Even if you're a taller guy, you can, it's contoured to fit even longer legs than mine are. And it's a nice bike for around the city. Now you can turn it into, into like a touring bike. There are optional windscreens you can put on. There's a luggage rack, panniers. You can turn it into a bit of a adventure bike, something like that. But honestly, if you want a touring bike, just get the X or the T because the price difference from this to the X or the T is like two or 300 euros. So it's really not worth it to start adding windscreens and everything. If you want windscreens and touring, just get the bigger bikes they're already prepped for such a job but let's take this new one the new gk around the yard and talk about what how it feels and how the g series frame feels with a much more powerful engine and then we're gonna take the t2 a bit of a, for a bit of a stroll around the yard and i'm gonna tell you how the new engine impacts a touring bike or an adventure bike come on let's get cracking Alrighty, finally on the Zontes 350 
bikes. There we go. And I've I've all I've been really curious about this GK350 because I really like how the G handles, how you sit on it, how comfortable it feels, and how small it feels up here. But uh, as for audio's sake, but uh, it 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 always have it it's always been lacking a little bit in the power department. But with 125 and 155, that's to be expected. And I mean. Those engine sizes are for beginners, uh, for 16 year olds, because you have your A1 license. But if you're in your 30s and you just got your motorcycle license, you might actually look at a 350. Because, honestly, it's not that bad in terms of power. It's powerful enough that you can have quite a lot of fun with it. <laughs> and, uh, it's easy to grow into i mean it's not uh, intimidating you can easily ride it slowly it's just a lot of fun now how does the 350 cc engine feel compared to its predecessor the 312 well basically the sound is the same it feels pretty much the same the vibrations are the same everything is just about the same uh, what is different because of the bigger bore of the cylinder you get a lot more torque and you get a lot more torque down low now maximum torque is not that different and it's at the same 7500 rpm but what is different is the amount of torque at lower rpm it's a lot a lot a lot more torque it feels a lot more meaty i mean we're here in second gear basically idling and we just get on it up to 5,000 RPM. It just pulls and pulls for days. That's the interesting part about this new engine. On the top end, it really doesn't feel that much different. It's only four horsepower in the top end. But in the bottom end where you keep it in the revs around the city, like normal low revs, it just feels a lot more pokey, a lot more potent. A lot more fun to be honest because you can ride the torque you don't need to rev it out like the old 300 the old 300 was a bit dead below 6000 rpm above 6000 it was awesome but below 6000 it was dead look at look at this 3000 rpm from 3000 to 6000 we didn't even reach maximum torque or maximum power just half throttle and it just pulls and pulls now granted the G is a light bike and it still has the same nimble characteristics as the previous generation of G scrambler because it's pretty much the same rider triangle it's still just as fun to chuck about play with the gears chuck it into a bend it's really awesome for a city bike this is just an awesome option and even if you want to carve some roads you can <laughs> a lot of fun and maneuverability absolutely spot on i mean just work the clutch easily easily and if you want to get on it you have to be careful because it does like to raise the front wheel because of the extra torque down low and how light this bike is it does like to raise the front wheel a little bit up in the air but you have to really provoke it just keep it in the lower rpm and just use the newfound torque of the 350 cc engine and just have fun with it just keep it i don't know 2000 rpm just yep pulls for days at 2000 rpm this g series uh, frame and this 300 cc engine are really a beautiful match if you want a city bike fuel efficient light and a lot of fun around the city easy to maneuver around cars easy to have fun with but the newfound torque in this engine is not only fun for a city bike oh no in terms of a touring bike 
that's where you need torque that's where you need low down power so let's take a ride on the T and see how that thing rides now this is where the added torque of the 350 cc engine really starts to get into its own because an adventure bike is supposed to be something you keep at low rpm you just pull along maybe you do some dirt roads and then every now and then you need some extra juice to get over over a crest over a bump over a rock over anything and also maybe you need to overtake something you need a bit of power going uphill to overtake something you don't want to constantly be downshifting and working the gearbox because you're on a long road trip you want to be relaxed and fourth gear just getting on it just look at how it gains momentum it gains speed on this adventure bike the t and also on the x the added torque of the free of the 350 cc engine feels like it's home this is where it belongs this is where the added torque of the engine really helps the bike out to feel a lot more powerful this honestly it feels very close to a 500 cc bike like a cb 500 like i don't know the maverick the ktm duke 390 or the adventure 390 in terms of power it's right there up with them and in terms of torque now it's up there up there with them with the torque yes it is <laughs> now what i am sad to report is that because it's basically the same engine just bored out you still have the same vibrations over 7000 rpm that you had on the previous model that's the caveat of trying to make a small single cylinder engine have 40 horsepower it's gonna get buzzy there's no way around it you either rubber mount the engine which is extremely expensive or basically you do de you deal with the vibration <laughs> <laughs> really like the torque and I still enjoy the maneuverability of the T how light the bike feels how easy it is to just feather the clutch and do these tight turns maneuvers and the slipper clutch is such a beauty to use even if you're a little bit lazy with the clutch you can get perfect shifts just about all the time All bikes should have a slipper clutch, honestly. All bikes should have a slipper clutch because it just makes everything so bloody easy to use. <laughs> but you can see I'm just keeping the bike as we run around the yard. I'm keeping the bike well under 5000 RPM, just using the torque at 3000, 4000 RPM. I find that, that I do that naturally because I don't need any more. The power it has at 2000 RPM is good enough for such a yard and that wasn't the case with the old 300. With the old 300 I kind of revved it out a little bit more. This I'm just using the torque and just enjoying the torque that it has. So yeah, the, so that's kind of it. It's an update. It's a nice update. Oh yeah, one more thing. The T and the X also have the mirrors from the M scooter. I don't know why they changed them. I, see, I saw nothing wrong with the old mirrors, but there you go. It has the mirrors from the scooter. They look a little bit different. They work just the same. They work pretty good. And that's about it. So I hope you enjoyed this overview of the changes that have arrived on the Zontes 300 series bikes with the engine now growing to 350 cc's gaining a lot more torque down low a little bit of top end power but this is just where it's at I mean 2000 rpm second gear it just sings and just it, it just goes it has that 
wave of torque pushing you at 2000 rpm you can just roll on the throttle and it has that wave of torque it it feels like it feels like the 312 cc should have felt it's just an update if you have the 312 honestly i would cons i wouldn't consider upgrading because it's not that big of a difference but if you don't and you were a little bit worried about the power of the old engine well this brand new engine fixes all your worries it has plenty of power if you can live with the buzziness at high rpm it's a beautiful bike Honestly, now I think it would have been a good idea to gear the bike down. Maybe go to a 14 tooth front sprocket because it has the torque for taller gearing. But you can do that aftermarket. You can modify your bike. You can buy a 14 tooth sprocket and modify it. But yeah, that has been it. Thank you all so very much for watching, for liking the videos, for subscribing to the channel. This channel has grown quite a bit lately and i'm really glad to see that and i'm really happy you enjoy the content and many more videos to come on bikes on trips on whatever i can come up with so until next time guys take care out there everyone and ride safe goodbye <laughs>